Hey guys, I wanted to make this video to uh, share with you guys a little bit more about my process, uh, specifically my sketching techniques, how I get uh, to this result in just a couple days and things that I'm looking for and, and basically how I'm approaching certain things. Uh, before we get to the more complex stuff, I wanted to make this video to just take a step back and give you guys a little bit more, just an introduction to ZBrush in case you're not super familiar, but more specifically introduction to my workflow and, and how do I work and uh, things that I, that I have in, in my hands here to make my life a little bit easier. So first of all, if you'll see my UI is a little bit different, uh, not too, too different than uh, you know, a lot of different users out there have a very complex UI. I've been using this UI for quite some time now. I basically have my lighting here and a couple brushes that, that I like the most. And you can easily customize uh, your UI. ZBrush gives you uh, very, a lot of tools to just drag and, and drop uh, things that you use uh, more often into spaces that you want. You can also create extra tabs and things to put stuff in it. Uh, so I'll share with you guys mine, but mine is very simple. I think the secret to the speed and the workflow is mainly on, on the hotkeys. Uh, so I have my brushes into my C, my lower keys here, C, V, N, and you see my brushes kind of swapping as, as we talk. And uh, if you're gonna watch the videos, you're probably never gonna see me going into the brush section and selecting a brush. I have all my, my most used brushes here, which is clay, move, inflate, standard, and then them standard. And the ones that I have here on the corner are the ones that are very useful, but I, know I don't use it you know, so much, but I, I do have them available here. And I will share with you guys my hotkeys as part of this, so you guys can, you know, uh, start with that. You can also just set up your own hotkeys. Again, it's very easy. Uh, ZBrush, you can, I think it's Control. Uh, if, you, if you Control Alt and click on something, it will ask you to assign uh, a key to this, to this click. So you can do that very easy with the things that you like the most. So with that out of the way, uh, before you guys get started with these videos, I wanna make sure you are very comfortable with the tools and how to sculpt in ZBrush you will find that technically there's a lot to you know, go deep and learning you know, within ZBrush, but in reality, you don't need much to just get to a, to a sculpt, you know, something that you use on a 2D sketch or later in 3D when you're gonna you know, start doing retopology and get this ready for a game, a cinematic, whatever is the case. Basically, the sculpting is the most important thing. So I'm just gonna erase this. Uh, I'm gonna deselect, I'm gonna erase this canvas uh, and I'm just gonna start with primitives. And you, as you know, you know, everything in 3D starts with primitives. ZBrush gives you uh, a good range of primitives. I'm just gonna start with a cube and I'm gonna put this, hit edit so I can rotate. Basically, I cannot edit this cube because it's not a polymesh 3D. All we have to do is come here and make, make it a polymesh and now I can move it around and do whatever I want. If I hit X, I turn on symmetry. It's also here on transform and now I can move it with symmetry. Uh, and what I want you guys, let me put like a white background so it's easier to see what's happening. Um, what I want you guys to get used to, especially if you're starting, if you're a beginner, get used to the navigation, how to move things around, how to, how to zoom in, zoom out. Uh, and basically I'm gonna turn this cube into a sphere. And again, that's what I'm saying, like it doesn't really matter as much with what you start. I'm gonna show you there are different ways to approach a lot of different things. But what, what you do need to be good at is just getting to a shape, uh, manipulating the forms to get to a shape that you want. It doesn't matter what uh, you start with, and you, you see that throughout the videos. Uh, so now that I have this uh, sphere here, I can easily start manipulating and creating something out of it. What you realize is that once I start moving it around, the, the mesh, the topology gets stretched. How we get around this is ZBrush is uh, DynaMesh. You go down here in geometry, and if you hit this DynaMesh button, you would see that it calculates the topology, and uh, or the, the, it calculates the mesh and, and recreates the topology on top of that. So I can easily start pulling it, and control click, control drag, uh, and recalculate the DynaMesh. And with that, we can make you know basically whatever we want out of this. Now, it is very complex to control a lot of shapes doing this. So you will find things that maybe you want to start with the leg and then you just start with the primitive and then merge it, up, merge it down. So what I'm going to show you guys now is just different ways to approach certain things. Let's say uh, we wanted to make a horn, right? Which is kind of what we're doing here. 
So I can mask this. If I control, click, and mask, now I invert the selection and I can just move this, kind of extrude this out, right? Now I have a shape, which it looks like a cylinder, um, and I can start creating a horn out of this and start manipulating the shape. What I do recommend is that you start very low res. Uh, you know, a lot of people want to go high res, especially when you're starting it. You want to go really low res at the beginning so you can easily, you know, so you can manipulate this surface a little bit easier. So as we do this, it's easy to create like a, a little horn, you know, and get it into shape. Another way you could create this, you could just insert another primitive. So if I come here on the brush, insert primitives, and I'll grab a cylinder, you know, and I can insert this over here, right? That's another way to approach this. Now, you see it's two different meshes. If I dynamesh it, it will merge it together. So it's basically the same thing that we did. We masked and then we extruded and then we have this shape. Um, another way that you can do this, it, it's simply just like we did at the beginning, just pull this around, dynamesh, pull it around, dynamesh it. That's another way to, uh, you know, to, to, get a sh to get to a shape. Um, another way you could do it is also uh, duplicate this. So if I'm gonna go here in subtools, I'm duplicating this subtool, and I'm gonna you know, transform this into the shape that we want. You know, whatever it is, like I'm keeping it very, very loose here. Dynamesh it, I'm just gonna delete this extra stuff. But basically this is just another technique that you need to have on, on uh, your mindset when you're sculpting it. Like what is the fastest way to get to a certain result? That's what we're getting at. Um, but I could just get this shape in here. And then once we, you know, we can keep it separate or once we merge it down, so we merge it together into the same subtool. Now if I dynamesh it, it's gonna weld it together, right? So uh, what we're getting into is basically you need to have all these uh, tools available so when you are sketching something then you need to think what's the what's the what's the fastest way that I can get to a certain result right I don't want to be thinking about uh, what I'm gonna do next or how I'm gonna approach certain things I just basically do it like I don't spend a lot of time thinking about how I'm gonna get to a certain result uh, doing it at this phase you know will, will get you to the result faster and that's one of the kind of the, the tips that I have for you if you're sketching or trying to get faster. Get the shape in there and then start manipulating it into the shape that you want. Um, what I do want to avoid is starting to append, append a lot of primitives. Uh, that's what takes a long time. So let's say from here that this guy will gonna have an earring, right? Like I could, I could come in and just insert a tube or I can kind of come in here, um, get a ring, make it a poly mesh, append into the uh, into the shape getting it into place right this is something that you might have to do right it's very it's not that easy to create a ring out of nothing right like but this kind of takes me a little while to get uh, what I do want you guys to think about is like what if we just make a ring out of this finding your mesh look at how the specular and how look at how it behaves uh, if you wanna, if you start getting a lot of those kind of chamfer and bevel edges that the spec is catching the light, uh, that's kind of what you want. And that's is if there's not a lot of overlaps within the folds because it's a thicker, heavy leather. Uh, but I'm coming back, uh, redrawing that patch creatively to be create, you know, kind of creating on the fly, but then still keeping it kind of consistent on the quality and and kind of understand where I need to put folds and where I need to put details. This way it's getting kind of pull down and there's some tension around here then you start creating some folds and some interesting shapes here now and we can create that with them standard so I'll show you guys how to do that in 3d but in principle these are very similar uh, to what we looked at on the other one where are coming from here so you know of course all the folds we're gonna you know come from there okay I'm not looking at reference here I'm just going with kind of the knowledge that I have from some from from the years of doing this, and once I smooth it out and I kind of zoom zoom out, I can start maybe seeing some folds that you know I wasn't seeing it before. Spend a little more time splitting 
this mesh into more pieces doing zero mesh so the pieces are a little more clean especially on the helmet I want to make sure all those pieces coming from the armpit there and then using you know mostly clay to get that sharpness around the edge the tutorial is for you guys to look at how I am approaching the skull uh, so I'll let you guys uh, watch this it is the same like that's one way to apply alphas right the other way uh, is using similar alphas but then using a surface surface modifier so basically with this and I remove this basic noise and, uh, you know also drag and drop some texture on top of this you know there's this also works make this white so masks uh, and then do a, ma a cavity mask you could blur that now you see there's tons of information going on just with the, those alphas and what I'm doing now I'm masking with the cavity